Hello, good evening, and welcome one more time to C's Listening Room. Today, we're going to go on a little trip to the beach, the ocean. We're going to go surfing. Oh, we're not going to go surfing here, because this is Detroit, and we don't have oceans for hundreds and hundreds of miles from here. Um, but found the CD in the box. I forgot all about it. Mom. Music for our mother ocean. M-O-M. Music for our mother ocean. Shouldn't it be Momo? M-O-M-O? Just saying. Forgot I had this CD. Uh, I got this probably about 96. This, it came out in 1996. That's about the time I think that I bought this. And... I, it's basically from the it's a it's from the Surfrider Foundation. It explains who the Surfrider Foundation is in here. It's a uh, nonprofit dedicated to preserving the oceans, to restoring the the oceans, uh, cleaning them up from from pollution and whatnot. I mean, I didn't buy it for that purpose. I didn't buy it for any of the uh, the causes that that it's supposed to be. There's a lot of messages in here about the oceans and. Uh, why we should save them and all that, and uh, some pictures. Well, you know, some pictures of people surfing, and then there's some pictures that are supposed to pull at your heartstrings. There's like a there's like a, there's like a sea turtle in here that's caught up in a net, and there's a seal that's got all this. Uh, it's got like a a ring around them of garbage, and looks like a nuclear waste site next to a beach. I think that's what this is of. This is a cardboard, this is a big cardboard album. So this is all about, uh, yeah, you can see here, like it's, it's a lot of ocean stuff and it's supposed to make you all sad when you look at the uh, industrial waste going into the water there. And I didn't, I, I didn't buy it for any political, social, or whatever causes. I just bought it because of the listing of, of artists on here. It's a pretty good variety. And so I took this out again and listened to it. Uh, I gave it another listen today. Uh, first of all, I, mean, I don't really want to touch on this too much, but I'm, I don't really trust these nonprofit albums where supposedly you buy an album and it's supposed to go to a good cause because I, I really don't know how much of the money is really going to that cause. I bought this album when it was new. It came out in 96. So, I don't really know how much of the money that I spent on this CD actually went to Surfrider and how much of the money Surfrider in return gave to Ocean Restoration. So, I never was big into buying albums just because it went to a, a special cause because I really don't know. I, I guess I'm just kind of jaded or kind of kind of cynical. I just don't know how much of the proceeds actually went to that cause. So I don't go out of my way to buy albums because of where the money is going because I just figure very little of it will probably go there. So, and I don't live on an ocean. So, I mean, I've been to San Diego like 25 years ago and I thought it was really cool. All the surf shops along the ocean and, and the surf culture. I thought it looked really cool, kind of fun and, and just, just a good time. So, I mean, I, the ocean culture I, I like, I can't afford to live on the ocean. I would love to live somewhere in Florida, get, get a little rundown trailer, a couple blocks from the ocean in middle of January, walk half a mile down the street and put my toes in the water. It would be a great life if I could afford it. I would love that, but I'm a mere mortal. So I can't afford that life. But I mean, that wasn't even why I bought the album. I, I like beach culture. Uh, spent a fair amount of time growing up on the beach. Um, you know, we had a, when I was first born, our, our first house I lived in, our, uh, our subdivision, our, our uh, homeowners association, had a little parcel of land on this inland lake that was our neighborhood beach. So we had a dock and a little raft in the middle of the of the water. There it was kind of anchored down, and it had some uh, 
some barbecue grills, and then we moved. But then uh, we would still go to like county beaches uh, during my childhood. And plus, my grandparents had uh, a couple acres on one on uh, Lake Huron, so they had beachfront right there in their backyards that we would go to and, and visit. So I mean, I've spent a lot of time on beaches. I grew up on beaches. It was a big part of my childhood, and I, I love beach culture. But again, I didn't buy the album because it's about beach life or because it's it has to do with the beach. So I do appreciate the beach. I do, I do have a love for the beach. And as I said, I've got a history with, you know, growing up on beaches. But they're not oceans, and that's a big difference. I mean, we're just like little freshwater inland lakes and stuff. So I can't really fully understand surf culture because I'm not from that part of the, the country. But I certainly appreciate and respect surf culture because it, it is a pretty fun culture. It is a, it's just laid back. It's, it's cool. It's just a fun life. So a lot of this album is dedicated to that, or the songs are are kind of about the ocean and surfing and all that. It's, it's, it's kind of fun, but the real reason I bought the album, it's going on my little, going loop in a, it's going my little loop of conversation here. Um, Pearl Jam, Brian Setzer, Pennywise. Uh, I mean, Everclear. No doubt, this is a who's who, this is a what's what of mid-90s popular music. And that's the reason I bought the album. I bought the album just because of the variety of artists that were on it, the quality of artists. And most of these are not available, I don't think, on other albums. Soundgarden's My Wave is, that's on Super Unknown. That song is included on this album. Um, but that's, and then, um, you've got the Ramones, California Sun. I believe that was on an earlier album as well. But, uh, track one, Sprung Monkey. Kind of a, kind of a punk band. Never really got into the, uh, to the big time. I actually owned, I think I still own one of their studio albums. So, it's a little bit of a fan of theirs. Uh, Pearl Jam, Grammy Out of Control. Now, I had to look up what a Grammy was. Now, I used to own an AMC Gremlin automobile. And we called our cars Grammys, and that's the only time I've ever heard the term. So, like, the AMC Gremlin community would post pictures of their cars on the Facebook group and say, hey, check out my 1972 Grammy with an aftermarket V8. Oh, that's a sweet Grammy you got. So the only time I've ever heard Grammy is from the, the Gremlin car community. Apparently, a Grammy is an, a young, inexperienced surfer. So, I learned something. Okay, I, I've had this CD. I didn't even notice that the song was called Grammy Out of Control. That's what it is. It's a young, inexperienced. And the song, it's Pearl Jam doing a cover, apparently, of a obscure surfing song. It's Pearl Jam trying their hands at a uh, surf sound. Kind of cool. Uh, Brian Setzer Orchestra doing an instrumental. Some great guitar work. Just a great song. Uh, not a big Porno for Pyros fan. Um, Bally Eyes. Bally Eyes. It's okay. Uh, Pennywise. Okay. You got a skate hardcore punk band <laughs> doing Surf in USA. Interesting choice. Um, kind of cool. Uh, you got Silver Chair, Surfing Bird, the old Trashman song. Uh, <laughs> sung with an Australian accent. You got to hear it, man. Uh, Gary Hoey, he's a great guitar player that never really got his due. Kind of a shredder, immensely talented, immensely skillful guitarist. Never really got a lot of attention, never really had the, the fame and the success he should have had. They're doing wipe He's doing Wipeout with Donovan Frankenreiter. Uh, I mean, Gary Hoey, if you're a fan of, of great guitar work. You're going to like Gary Hoey's stuff, mostly instrumental stuff. Uh, he should have really been been bigger than he was. Uh, common Sense, Never Give Up. You know, motivational music. 
Um, that I'm not a reggae fan. I don't really listen. I never listened to reggae. Uh, I know nothing about reggae. So it should say something where I say that that is probably one of the best songs on the album. That's one of my favorites. That is a good song. And that's coming from a guy who never listens to the genre. Reverend Horton Heat. Funny guys. They're a funny band. Lots of humor. Great surf sound. They got a real rockabilly type surf rock sound. And lots of humor in that song. Good surfing type sound. Perfect song for the album. Uh... Pato, Banton, and the Reggae Revolution. I haven't really heard of them. Second half of the album kind of falls apart a little bit. That first half of the album, I think, is perfect. But then you got Primus. I'm not a huge Primus fan. I've liked some of their songs, but this one, Mr. Know-It-All, doesn't really do it for me. Sailing on from No Doubt. I don't dislike No Doubt, but... I don't know what people would think of that one. It's it's not bad. Helmet. Army of Me. It's the Bjork song. I, I like Bjork's version. I like the original Bjork version. It's all electronic. It's It doesn't have guitars or anything in it that I know, as far as I know. I think it's pretty much all done with, like, keyboards. It's a very haunting song. Uh, unsettling. Uh, and it's got great uh, female vocals with the, her thick Icelandic accent, and it works perfectly. It's a great song. Yeah, I don't think it translates well to Helmet style. They're more of a punk metal band, and basically just putting in an electric bass, uh, electric guitars in the song. <sighs> with Paige Hamilton's voice. I just don't think this is the right song for Helmet. I don't think this is the right cover for that genre. I think the song was brilliant in its original form, but it, but as great of a song as it is, it does not translate well to punk metal. And it doesn't have to. A song doesn't have to translate well to another genre to be great. It helps, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to sound great throughout the spectrum of music to be a great song. Sometimes the song is perfectly good within one genre, and that's all, That's all, and it's it's fine. That song was perfect the way it was written. That's just not a Helmet song, and I don't think it really fits the album. It's too aggressive. It's too angry. Um, it doesn't have really anything to do with surfing, with the ocean, with nature, I just don't think that it's an appropriate track for this album. And that's gonna and that's one of the reasons why I say the second half of the album kinda of falls apart. And that's where you get my wave from Soundgarden, which really isn't about waves or surfing, and it's a previously released track. It was a hit song, probably the biggest hit on this album, but it was a hit off the Super Unknown album. And I feel it was a little bit lazy. Here you got unreleased material, and here they take this big hit, throw it on this album, and it's like, okay, here, here's our contribution. Uh, Quiet Warrior from Jewel. So you get your little bit of a gentle, acoustic, beachy type folk music. Your token folk song. Everclear, hateful. The song isn't as bad as the name. The name makes it sound like it's going to be an aggressive, angry song. There's kind of a surf vibe to it. It's a punk song with a little bit of a surf vibe. Uh, Seven Mary Three does Blackwing, um, another acoustic track. Uh, Beastie Boys. I'm not a Beastie Boys fan. Sorry, I I just I I'm not a Beastie Boys fan. I. I apologize, but I'm not. And Nettie's Girl is atrocious. That song almost brings down the entire album single-handedly. It is awful. It's a joke song. It's not even supposed to be taken seriously. But, you know, all, most of the songs, or a lot of the songs on this album, are fun. But, they, but they're but they fun in that surfing, ocean, riding the wave type of thing. If most of these are fun songs. You're not supposed to take a lot of these too seriously. I mean, the Reverend Horton Heat, I Can't Surf. It's a fun song. Um, here in uh, Surfing Bird from Silverchair, kind of a novelty. 
hearing a punk band doing Surfing USA, kind of a novelty. It's, it, you're not supposed to take it seriously. It's fun. This song is such an obnoxious joke, though. It's so obnoxious. They, I think they're intentionally singing poorly. The singing is really, really bad. It's just it, it's just a bunch of rambling about stupid stuff. I, I absolutely hate this track. I almost want to trash the entire album just for the inclusion. I don't like Beastie Boys to begin with. I absolutely abhor this song. <laughs> okay. I, I, uh, no, I do not own any Beastie Boys albums. Uh, then you got Sublime, Bad Fish. Pretty good song. A little bit of a reggae uh, beat to it. Uh, Sublime, you know, Southern California band from Long Beach, which is an oceanfront community. So, you know, I, they have. I'm sure that this album me, uh, did mean something to them, that this cause was was pretty important to them. Pretty good track. And then Blink-182 finishes it off with Waggy. Oh, not bad. It's them trying to do surf punk. Modern surf punk. So, I mean... It, that's the reason I bought the album. Great artist selection. Uh, it is a great cross-reference of the genres that were really popular around 1996. There's, there's a little bit of punk. There's some skater punk. There's surf punk. There's some rockabilly on there. There's even some reggae. And so the band list, the, the, the cast, the ensemble that was uh, included on this album was the real reason I bought it. So, I mean, I don't know if... Surfrider Foundation's even still in business. I don't know how many copies of this were printed. It's probably going to be very hard to find, but there's some rare tracks on here from some very notable artists. I would say most of the track selection is pretty good. Uh, as I say, a couple of them seemed a little bit lazy, or a couple of them didn't seem well thought out. Some of the tracks probably shouldn't have been on here because it just doesn't really fit the theme. But overall, I would say as a 1996 compilation or as an album of 1996 as a various artist album of 1996 it's it's a pretty good snapshot of that time period of modern music <laughs> despite the beastie boys track and despite the ill-advised helmet track i'm going to give this a shaky four out of five because a lot of the music is really fun to listen to a lot of the music captures that beach vibe, that fun surfing, you know, riding the wave kind of groove. And more often than not, I think most of the most of the songs typically stand uh, stand up on their own. Uh, and, but it's just a great variety. You're not listening to one artist that wrote and recorded all these songs at the same time, so you get a little bit of variety. You're going to be listening to some punk, you get some guitar shredding, you get a, you get a couple of rockabilly tracks on there, you get some reggae. It's a really nice mix of music. It's a, it's a great sampler that usually is trying to go towards a, a more upbeat and cheerful or optimistic type of vibe, it's, it's, which is why... The Helmet song really doesn't seem to belong because it's, it's just too aggressive for stuff like Surfing Bird and Surfing USA and California Sun and, and all that other stuff. So despite a couple very poorly advised and very, and very annoying tracks, I would, I'm would i going to give this a shaky four out of five. It's, it's a pretty fun album to listen to, great variety, but an important... Uh, cast of characters on here for a 1996 album. I mean, if you're buying a used copy of this, you're not going to be you're not going to be saving oceans or anything, but you are going to be getting a, a nice little nice little collection here of mid-90s contemporary music. So, 4 out of 5, a little cheeky 4 out of 5, but... There's a lot of there's a lot of pretty good stuff in what I would like to call Momo, Mom. Music for our mother ocean. Kind of glad I found this one and gave it another listen. Some good artwork too. There's nice little paintings there of, uh, of ocean life. Uh, really a surprise. Really an interesting album, especially all these years later. Uh, 
I give this one a seal of approval. Give it to the be- uh, give it to the Beastie Boys. <laughs> you might have a four out of five. Anyway, thanks for uh, bearing with me. This is probably my longest video to date. Uh, I know I, I kind of rambled and went in circles and kind of went on my own little diatribes, but thanks for sticking around and uh, thanks for watching me to the end. Thank you. I'll catch you later. Bye.